start with a quote seen from space earth has no borders and i think <laughs> that's something that uh, that all astronauts used to say when they came back from iss and uh, something that's particularly true for an event like this one where you we got people together from so different places and I, I think it's quite cool i really like this this idea and i really like to um to see pictures like like this one so uh, just a brief summary of what i'd like to discuss with you as i said before um basically uh, i thought okay well, what can i share i think uh, it's interesting to uh, to share with you uh, information in general uh, about so blue about um, how so blue works about uh, the company maybe airbus how it works uh, because maybe you're thinking on, on a career on or on aerospace in general i think you know um, i have a couple of hours so i just wanted to uh, share uh, information that i think may be interesting for you so don't hesitate to like interact via the chat and uh, letting me know where you need more information or something or where something is not clear etc but what i thought we could do we to start with an introduction introduction on both uh, airbus because rather you're thinking hey this is not uh, the a380 so how come you're working on the cloud now and so blue uh, then on to the infrastructure basically well me i'm the the production manager meaning i'm the responsible for making the system work as well as for the help desk so answering to questions of uh, users uh, potential customers uh, use cases etc saying hey what do you think we can do something with this could you be able to help us out sometimes we don't know sometimes we need to ask other experts sometimes we need to ask for help as other people but in general we're trying alongside the european commission and the european space agency to foster the use of geo intelligence uh, data and the copernicus program for the benefit of society really um yeah so i'm more on the uh, engine side if you want to more the application or the tools layer and uh, yeah i'll be presenting you a little bit how things work so you can see behind the curtain uh, what the platform relies on uh, which i'm sure you're probably more familiar than, than me in a lot of, of these aspects and then we'll talk a bit about the application layer of Soblu, meaning on top of like the engines, the foundations of uh, the cloud infrastructure, how is it um, how is it placed, and what kind of microservices are part of it, and how do we divide it, and how do we monitor them, and what do we do with them to, to make sure that it works. Then maybe I'd like to have a little break because i don't think uh, i think i read something like you can only keep uh, focus for like 15 minutes or something and uh, the, the attention span is going smaller and smaller with time so um, but you let me know maybe we can just continue and then i'd like to introduce especially the the Soblu desktop of which uh, i submitted you the um, access the credentials for two machines that we develop we deployed sorry for the for this hackathon and maybe you've been already playing with it it's basically a vm where you've got uh, quite a few tools uh, packed up from from isa and from airbus to like do image processing and then you've got uh, all of the the documentation on the api etc to, to try and figure out how to use this platform and as i said before i know this is uh this is not the most obvious uh, field of work in the beginning but with the with the amount of, inform of information and how easy it is with the APIs to end up obtaining information, you can do it really, like, really incredible things. I'll just like to quickly start with uh, with the description of, of the company and where, where we are. So Airbus is uh, divided into a commercial aircraft that of course you, you know about, helicopters, UAV or hubs, and then we've got defense and space. Now, so on defense and space, we've got the satellite part where you um, develop satellites. If you're interested in this, there's uh, in Madrid, in Getafe, they are prime for the, one of the next Copernicus satellites, for instance. 
then you've got in Germany, then you've got uh, here in Toulouse, in France, everywhere. Then you've got like uh, defense, especially in the south of Spain, in Sevilla, and Cádiz, Puerto Real, as well as in Getafe, in Germany, in Manching, etc. And the important thing for defense and space really is how does it all fit together? You know, how can you profit from the image and the geo information you've got from satellites? Um, as well as planes, as well and hubs to like put all that together in the cloud and make something out of it you know instead of like having separate divisions how to put all of that together and that's partly what we're trying to do with the digital platforms and with the, with the cloud so you may say what part of the cycle is Airbus on well we're basically on everything we're basically on developing and testing the satellites as you can see here or uh, the transportation with a beluga excel i don't know if you've seen one fly but it's pretty amazing it's really cool uh, you can put uh, parts of a satellite in them or part of a plane in it and fly from one place to another sometimes they also come by boat and then you have to block the roads and then you see the trucks there going through national roads it's quite spectacular people sit there and eat popcorn to see it through uh, also on the launch and of course on the operations uh, you can do operations on the International Space Station, this is what I used to work before, that's why I'm so passionate about space in general, and uh, so, so called the Columbus module of ISS, then we got operations on the satellite, uh, low Earth and orbit operations, meaning when you put it on space and you start uh, testing that it actually works. And then we've got the ground segment operations like Sentinel-1, Sentinel-3. Sentinel-1 is moving to the cloud next week. It's a pretty big event. I'm sure you can follow the, the news on, on ESA website and on some of the links that I'm going to show you soon. Uh, the moving from the legacy uh, VMware based system to a cloud based system with Orange, the same partner that we've got. And it's been a challenge and it's quite interesting. So basically, what the PDGS does is they receive the data from the different stations throughout the world. So you've got one in Mas Palomas, you've got some always in the north, uh, meaning in the Arctic Circle, like Svalbard, like Kiruna. I read there's a, um, a friend from, from Malmo here, so I'm sure you're very familiar with, with Svalbard and with uh, Kiruna. And you know, those stations tend to be on the on the Arctic Circle because you get more passages from satellites, so you get more information. And basically, they process all these images and then they distribute them. And one of the places where they distribute them is on the Data Hub and the DS Hub and the Sci Hub from ISA for a Copernicus program that are free and accessible to everyone. And that's the reason why the European Space Agency and the European Commission have put quite a lot of money behind this project, this program to make it happen and to say well i'm sure the scientific community and the research community will make something good out of it and eventually uh, we'll all be a little bit more capable of this digital transformation we're living on and add this to my tasks i have to avoid the demo effect that adrian suffered i have quite a lot of uh, tabs already open but i just wanted to give a, a sense of like different uh, like cloud operations that you can as you know use uh, geo information gis for like uh, you know on airplanes uh, or um, uh, gps awareness on uh, serve and rescue services like we do with galileo etc so these are a couple of the uh, like Skywise service or AirSense that also Airbus is part of. I'll give you a couple of links in case you want to check it out in case that's something that you that you're also also interested in as part of the the learning process that we're all in when it comes to the cloud, which is because it is fairly fairly new still. I'll come back to my slides. I'm sorry, I'm not really checking the chat, so maybe the moderators you you guys can stop me if you think there's something worth discussing because I'm between two screens. Uh, let me have a little look, see what you guys are talking about. Um, if I can. So digital platform operations, that's the other thing we do on top of the, the things that I've mentioned and that's why we're all here today after this quick introduction that may hopefully you found interesting. And as Ludwig was saying, like now we are integrating the three digital platforms onto Soblu, meaning that you have you can get access to all of these resources. Uh, depending on the project, depending on what you want, if you want to go farther than the hackathon, if uh, you know you have a startup or, or whatever. Uh, on the one hand, we've got uh, One Atlas, that is the platform for Airbus, Airbus very young, high resolution imaginary from spot uh, satellites, from Playat satellites. There will be a Playat Neo 
new generation launch soon that you can you can follow live if that's something you're interested in on the Ariane website. It's always quite spectacular, unless you can fly to, fl to French Guayana, which I'm not sure you'll be able to currently. Then we've got Soblu that will go into very, a lot of detail, I think in a detail today, and then we got up 42 which is more a tailor-based solution. The guys are very are proper, proper experts on coding and they can help you out with anything you want to do regarding uh, geodata. Um, they, we serve them in a way. They use our APIs, they use our products, they use our catalogs, they, they, they use some of our apps to serve their customers who maybe say, hey guys, we need uh, in Malawi, or we need in Borneo information like this a specific product to look at the forestation. I think some of them were looking at the rate the trees were growing in the last five years, and maybe those that data is not necessary online, so we need to retrieve them to put it on, on service as quick as possible to make sure that we don't delete it, that it's available, and, and it's part of the process. As, as I'll tell you later now, we've got, we, we're, we're moving on to customer-based approach, and that's why I was saying before that we really need feedback, uh, because we want to create things that are useful for everyone. Um, and that's what we're doing with some new applications like a drive, same as you have your Google Drive, you'll have your Earth Observation Imaging Drive, where you can store all the images you want, all the code, maybe App42 has made for you, maybe you you got a couple of images from high resolution from one atlas to go on top of the Copernicus images, and then you're doing a study on COVID and how it's affecting pollution in China, or how it's affecting pollution in Europe since people are not traveling, or you're you're looking at the Amazon on Brazil, seeing what Bolsonaro is doing. You know, you can go into all kind of, of different details. And I just wanted to show the, that you can find a lot of information. You can find webinars. On YouTube, you can find an intro on YouTube for Sublu, and we have a Map42 channel. So that leads me. I'm not going to play it. I just want you to be aware. You know, it's, a, it's an hour long, so there's no point. But you know, this you can, if you're interested in this and part of the hackathon, you can go in here and you can see there's quite a lot of detail on a, on a lot of stuff. Uh, for App42, yes, you have a look at the channel. Five things to know about uh, uh, NDVI, which we'll see later on the Jupyter Notebook examples. You know, it's a, a few minutes video and it's quite interesting. And these guys are really reachable. So I'm sure if you if you wanted to at some point drop them an email and get in touch with them, you know, as Ludovic said for ourselves, I will be really, really happy to to reply and to help uh, as much as we can. So so just uh, just go and, and check all of these things out and all of the information that is available to try to to step up on on your on your knowledge on on the information. This is the introduction on Soblu. And I think it's not bad. Can you hear the the sound the sound on the on the video? No, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. no. Okay, and I will just skip forward. I mean you know where to find it. But basically this is the idea when we say like cross uh, fertilization is uh, how we create, uh, how we make available certain tools, uh, the SDK, uh, the Copernicus uh, data, the Copernicus core services, the uh, App42 service to, for tailored solutions, the Orange platform with everything that Orange has to offer, on people demographics, on people movement, on, on Orange is quite a capable cloud provider and company. So, um, so basically, so Blue is not just a repository where you come and fetch your data. It's we want to be more. We want to be more, and we're working to be more, especially on demand with tailored solutions. And that was the most important thing that I wanted. I wanted to show in the video that and some nice music, some very uh, people really engage, and you know. And quite a nice moment. This is just to give you an idea of, yeah, so 
multi-spectral imaging, the degree of resolution that you can get on 30 centimeters with different layers, infrared or not, it's, it's quite incredible. And you can imagine all the um, applications for maritime surveillance, for, um, where we go, for agriculture, etc like the challenge you have for this hackathon, which is uh, fairly interesting. So if we go slightly more in detail about so blue, you may say, yeah, so blue, so what? What's all of that about? As we said, we have data as a service, infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, and software tools to make a sense of all of this. So how do you use it? How can I learn how to use it? Uh, data from Copernicus, uh, Sentinel programs, some very resolution imaginary from um, um, play ads and uh, a spot image and the Copernicus core services that I'm sure you're aware of it of them by now the third day of the hackathon which are uh, post-process image that with information on uh, on maritime on the climate change we'll see them in a second as infrastructure we offer a secure cloud service a managed service in co collaboration with orange i'll go to the orange web console later the platform we base our architecture on is uh, kubernetes uh, with uh, some repositories that come from mono monocular like uh, we've got harbor and we use we use etcd we, all, we use uh, well uh, some components made in house as well and then the software capabilities that are the top layer to like uh, dig into the, um, the data and the infrastructure and make the most of it. Uh, the processing algorithms, some of them, as I said on the chat earlier on, are pre-coded. So you can at least have a go and just get a couple of results, which is always great when you, you, know, you don't have to do much. You, you may need to insert your API key. Uh, that you can obtain from the website the moment you, re you register and then you can download your product and you can try and play with it and see what can you can you make out of it. Jupyter Notebook, that probably you're familiar with it. Uh, as a Java-based uh, Eclipse space solution where you can, with using uh, different uh, different languages like Python, uh, you, can, you can code uh, easily online. We've got the Soblue desktop that is an all-included machine. Two of them have been deployed for this hackathon, and that's why I offered the, the Excel sheet so we could like organize a little bit who's working with whom, depending on the teams, etc. And the toolbox and the SDK. Just a quick review. You let me know if you know enough about this already because I haven't followed all the hackathon, but. Uh, Copernicus is the largest set of observation data provider in the world. And that's thanks to, to Europe, to the European Union, which is great that we've got, we can uh, put these this projects forward. When it comes to Sentinel-1, we've got uh, a lot of radar uh, images with like products with different treatment. Sentinel-2, we've got all of these nice uh, optical images. We've got on Sentinel-3, Sentinel-5P, because this is precursor, Sentinel-5 will be launched in a couple of years, if I'm not mistaken. And this one is more thought, is not proper imaging, but more atmospheric data. As you can see here, so the different type of process, a different type, also for us a bit of a challenge to see how do you present this on the on the website because on, obviously on the interface uh, it's easier when you've got the map at least you know the region, but either you can visualize it with WNTS or not. So uh, different different kind of fish really. When it comes to the Copernicus core services, uh, they can be divided into these different categories. We've got the atmospheric ones for air quality and atmospheric composition, also layered ultraviolet radiation, the marine ones, observation forecast by the uh, service support of marine applications, marine safety, coastal and marine environment, land ones, emergency ones, and climate change that can go from forecast, ocean elevation, heat map, etc. It's uh, it's fairly interesting. Um, we've got a partner uh, company in the the the, uh, the Soblu consortium that operates the Copernicus Core Services CLS here in Toulouse as well. And uh, the the more complex products if you want to, but at the end of the day, it's uh, 
the more information you can obtain as well and more uh, profit that uh, I mean valuable information that and research that you can make out of it a few examples of these products like the precipitation the climate change ones the index uh, the camps for weather forecast lake coverage variation and here you have you can just see the, the variety of products when i mean that each one is a little bit different we've got a quite a variety on just on the, the center germany center europe area when it comes uh, specifically to what products do we have online uh, coming back to the idea of serving the customers as uh, well the, the users really because it's a free platform the um, the best we can uh, we are focusing on the three to nine last months for most of the collection most of the products and the previous one uh, can be obtained either from the ESA repository, the data hub, uh, directly going through Sobru, obviously, So, but it's not an internal download from our repository, other than that you go to the data hub. And uh, if it's out of the data hub in cold storage, then we bring it forward uh, for you, but that requires 24 hours and uh, that is something that we have seen with our with our partners that was quite interesting uh, for a lot of companies as i said that maybe said okay now we need information from 2017. we said well obviously that you cannot have everything online at all times um, and not tax not it's, it's it's just not very uh, optimize design really so uh, just let us what you know what you need let us know what you need and how can how can we help you? And uh, so you can you can have a look on the data and service offers on, on the website. Uh, I was also mentioning before that we normally keep products with cloud coverage for Sentinel to optical images below 50% because no one has told us till now that they have a use case for 50 to 100. You know, when you basically on the image you're only seeing clouds. Uh, but would that be the case? Obviously, we could retrieve them and make them make them available in. A little time when it comes to some of the services we offer we've got the sdk in that it's embedded uh, you could get it per se just the sdk but it's also embedded in the so blue desktop and we'll play with it in a minute uh, so blue desktop also has other applications like ESA and snap which i'm not extremely familiar with uh, maybe you've used it before if so let me know and let me know what you think of it uh, we have uh, backend service services that can be uh, contracted with Orange, and we've got a few uh, users that wanted to have their own tenant and uh, Orange uh, fast track them with respect to the regular process. So the tenants can be open in very little time, about a week maximum. And then, yeah, then uh, you can uh, have your some of your service manager that manage and, and monitor immediately within the Orange framework. And uh, as I was mentioning, after discussing with the people, with the users, that we've got uh, over a hundred or uh, thousand users, we are uh, coming putting together this drive to store all of the images on only one site, and you can. Uh, process them on directly on the cloud as well as this uh, easy api data warming interface to make the products available so uh, we've got over a million downloads via api so far just yeah, so you've got an idea of the size of the platform over a thousand users with uh, gone past this threshold already 50 million search via api and um, a lot of them because we see the statistics we monitor them um, and we know who's done what really just in case you're thinking of mischieving hmm, we know uh, so some of them are just like a few products just just trying just to see how it works and see if it's something they're interested in some just is part of the learning process we don't really have many we have two or three users that do like heavy, heavy downloading and heavy harvesting, but uh, but the rest of them are honestly part of the hackathon. We've served several hackathons. We are discussing with a lot of research institutions, and it's great. It's great because I think it's a learning process for everyone. Now, as I said before, I have been working on satellite operations. I work on human spaceflight operations, and then I came to the cloud, and it was also a learning process for me. 
So I think this is this is quite exciting and it's great to be able to have partners like One Atlas and App42 that can give you what we cannot give you because I would not be able to prepare a tailored solution for you. Uh, I am able to let you know if to make sure that the platform works. So as uh, I think Alexandra was saying on the on the chat, like uh, getting together and working as a team and everyone with the, the different capabilities, what really makes for instance, the Copernicus program possible in Europe, something that no single country in Europe would be able to launch uh, and to maintain uh, something like Copernicus or like Galileo. So that's quite a quite a good thing. And in case you were wondering, we even have some dollars from North Korea yeah, on the border with uh, Japan. So we're also monitoring those. Well, that's what I mean by worldwide usage. Um, about the hackathons, the last one we uh, we served, we provided data for was uh, this one, the the Ocean Hackathon. I don't know if you, if you guys, some of you, took part of it. It, it was great because um, I attended the final just to see the different projects, etc. And I, I was absolutely impressed that one one of the the projects that that won, or the one that received like the first prize, the main prize, managed to see how se seven species had migrated throughout the Mediterranean Sea based on the heat map of these uh, particular species and how they had moved from one place to another and how they were dangerous for the local environment on um, uh, let's say on Greece or on the on the coast of Spain or in Italy or in Malta and it was really really, really impressive what they managed to come up with in university as well uh, after working together and using what was available for them. I was uh, really impressed. So hats off to all of you for making uh, something so great for all of this uh, from our platform and obviously no pressure. <laughs> so this was the, the introduction. And I'd like to move on to the infrastructure. Just give you a bit of an idea on what is the what are the foundations of Soblu, what's under the carpet. Um, we are based on Orange Flexible Engine, a secure public cloud based on OpenStack, high performance, multi-certified, worldwide hosting, bare metal, highly secure, blah blah blah. But yeah, it's good. On top of that, so we've got the orchestration layer from which uh, with another and higher level of abstraction, so we don't have to be on the command line all the time. We we manage the the Kubernetes platform. We do this uh, using Rancher that maybe you know about Rancher, and it's a graphic user interface that allows us to see what's happening and uh, clearly interact and uh, with the different workloads that are deployed on the Kubernetes nodes. And then we've got at least three different tenants, one for production, one for testing, and one for pre-production, the things that are on in the pipe and are about to go into production. And then uh, we've got uh, a series of uh, of layers that make the, the systems hard and make the system lift. So we've got a multi-satellite data store that uh, gets the information uh, on the platform. Then we've got external applications from services like Harbor that we can install and upgrade on Kubernetes. Um, but I, I just want to show you it. So uh, yeah, uh, we're going to the Orange Wing Walk console and then we're going to run share and to Dynatrus. Let me, let me just go to this one maybe first uh, because it's maybe a little bit clearer. You see it in a, in a second, but you've got you call like the three Kubernetes masters that are like the three machines that really make this for how to administrate the, the load the, of the whole system on the for the for the platform. And if you know if some machines uh, die, then and then they need to come back up. And where do they go and and make all make all the, all the all the management really? So that's really like the the brain of the system. Then you've got what you call the Kubernetes workers that are the the nodes on which you deploy your system uh, via Docker. If you know the Docker, it's not it's not important. And uh, then uh, there's there's several load balancers as, as entry points that basically what they do is they manage the load. So they are smart enough to say, okay, uh, this uh, this node like this machine can go on here, on can go on those, that one depending on the resources, etc. So and um, there's something quite cool as well that we have that is called Dynatrust, and it's a sort of uh, 
layer on top of this that wraps it up and it's like a big brother. Uh, so it's able to go on all the logs and uses artificial intelligence to provide with quick diagnostics and say, hey, there's an alert here and you better check it out because I think it might be this problem. And it's quite useful. The moment you've got a platform this size, you cannot be checking every log. It's impossible. I mean, that's when I talk about the level of abstraction. You need to be really, really high up because if you want to do assembler, you may as well do something else. So uh, just quickly, let's go back to my tabs. See, we're all in the beginning, so we still have a few practical ones to go to, don't you worry. Uh, so this could be our um, web console. Yeah, just to give you an idea. I think I'm probably locked out. So let me try. I hope I don't have like the demo effect and that everything keeps working. It's everything, everyone okay. So these are all the different tenants that are part of that, that we manage and you, you can just see that we've got, I mentioned CLS for the Copernicus core services. We've got the pre-ops, we've got uh, production. I won't go into that one. <laughs> and, uh, for instance, we can go on to this one because it's the one I use to deploy the machines that you hopefully you'll, you'll want to use. And I just wanted to give you an idea on how flexible <laughs> and how easy it is really to like deploy stuff using this, something that otherwise would be extremely complicated. And here we see all the, the virtual machines, the Elastic Cloud Server machines that we are running on at the moment. There's the two machines for the two uh, Soblu desktops that, that we deployed for you. Uh, you have to choose a specific flavor, four virtual CPUs, 8 giga RAM is what it's called, an X-Large 2 machine hosted on EU West, meaning Paris. You can choose the system, the system this thing when you, I wanted to explain capacity. I just have to click here. It's quite, the configuration is pretty straightforward. That's pretty for, pretty much for everything we, we have on, on so blue on the infrastructure. Obviously I'm telling you this because I'm the ops manager, you know, so this is mostly my, uh, my role, this is uh, more what I do more than uh, than being on the uh, on the user end. That's where you come in, and we'll, hopefully you will let us know how can we be of more service. And basically, there's a little bit of monitoring also. Uh, we can see someone has been uh, making it work, which is good. And basically, everything that you can do with uh, fairly quickly. Object storage service, you can store it on your S3 buckets. You've got the size that we have over here, which is quite quite cool. And uh, something you can, will go later, but it's the Soblu public dashboard. So you see there the, on the buckets the, the, the size of the, all the products we're hosting at the moment, but this is also publicly available, just go to dashboardsoblu.eu or you can find it on the Soblu website. Uh, and you see uh, how many peta uh, we've got, uh, which products we've got more. If we have any incidents, we'll let you know as soon as possible. We're fairly transparent. I mean, we had unscheduled issues, cataloging complaint due to platform incident, and, voila. And, uh, and you can find a lot of information, a little bit of what's going on, the status, everything so that's uh, you can see everything's okay at the moment this is continuously checking if it can uh, go on and download and find products etc which is not too bad i wanted to just uh, show you a little bit how, how, how rancher looks like so here we have like different um different tenants we're managing here we can see the number of resources we use as uh, we use as you can see we're quite uh, we have a lot of space <laughs> so we give ourselves some room in case something something happens come here we can see different nodes this is what i was talking about the dynatrust uh, which is here this is dynatrust website i'm not making advertisement i'm just trying to let you know a little bit what it is it's like a software intelligence platform, AIO, hyperscale, application security, etc. All of this on top of meaning reading, going down to the bottom and reading all the logs and letting you know what's going on so you can react as quickly as possible as an operator. And to, in order to do that, we need to have some of the pods, uh, some of the workloads deployed on Dynatrust uh, on their own nodes, Docker. Okay over there and you can see we've had quite a lot of uh, of nodes uh, 
this one has a little bit of uh, still has some availability so we have some more deployment 62 giga 16 cpus and you know we can see some of the node metrics etc so i won't i won't go into detail i don't think this is the the goal of today but uh, just so you know how, how does it work what's behind it i think it it's it's interesting so this is what we just saw okay so we got the three masters of kubernetes and we have this eight uh, where basically we deploy everything docker based voila taking advantages of being on the on the flexible engine platform well not necessarily to go into a lot of detail either but basically saying that it's secure it's redundant it's fast it's performing it's uh, has a lot of vers versatility uh, it's very easy to use well is it a more ergonomic console that wds and azure is quite similar to aws it's um, that's a personal preference so i wouldn't go that far but the performance has been tested to be quite good the network as well so you say, may say, what does has to do with me? Well, it means that the moment you have some, something a bit more complex, it will go faster, it will be a bit more reliable. Because if, uh, you know, if one of the buckets has a problem, they transfer to another one or the, the ingress will be easily replaced and uh, you may be able to, uh, to continue and to be a bit more robust to the, um, the problems that every, every system has a little bit more on the main architecture so we basically harvest the products from the uh, yeah, go to solute as well where we just did that we harvest the products for copernicus core service or for sentinel which means we obtain the metadata we put them on the catalog so you guys see that exist and then we download the products and we put them in the s3 buckets so you can retrieve them if you were interested in a bit more uh, knowledge on the different layers, we use all of these databases. We've got ETCD, that has a key value database. Basically, lets you know where you are. If you were like harvesting products and you had to stop, lets you know where to pick it, pick up from there. We use MongoDB to like um, store the products. We use Elasticsearch to have an index for all the research. We use SQL, PostgreSQL, we use Redix on all of these uh, elastic volume services we have like different source of login for monitoring we same as a computer needs buses um, as a city needs buses for that matter uh, we have uh, messaging tools that uh, allow components to communicate one with each other it's called posting service isn't it so it's like you go to the post office and you post something and someone's waiting to receive it and that's how it works we've got two you may be asking why why would you have two when one post service already fails enough rabbit uh, mq it's something we use for wmts uh, so for the visualization of products and kafka is something we use for the rest of the system so we needed these two to collaborate with each other and as i said you can imagine it as a pipe and people are just putting 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 all data 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 at someone at some point in the pipe is going to read it and um, they can organize themselves as consumers so they all get the same data as if you were on an rss or a distribution list um, and yeah and then well, we've got the authentication, control man user control management, the APIs, and the data store. That basically, data store is what uh, what harvests and ingests the products. And this is just for the monitoring. Um, I, I'm sorry, I cannot really go into the monitoring, but uh, I just wanted to show more or less an average of the downloads we've got on Soblue. Uh, this is via internal API. This is external API, which means products that either are not on our catalog that they are on our catalog but we don't store them because they're old or yeah they've been deprecated by isa so then we re directly redirect you to the to the dos so you can download them and i was really interested in knowing who's this bloke <laughs> someone must have been doing like massive download in nearly 200 products and i suspect that it's uh, one of you so well done if you manage to download 200 products that means that you are uh fair far more competent than me on uh, on your geo data so well done but uh, it was interesting and probably it's one of you guys so if so yeah show yourself um yeah so on the data sources just to add a little bit more clarification on how 
the, the Diaz, that's not only us at all the Diaz. I don't know what Creo Diaz or Honda said, but uh, basically we get access to um, interface from the European Space Agency that are called the hubs. There's one that is the sci-hub, sci-hub.copernicus.eu, that it's free, accessible by everyone. You just need to register. It's fairly limited in capacity, in power, in bandwidth. You can only download one product at the time, and uh, that makes it not, not really useful for a lot of use cases. Uh, however, it's, uh, it's good enough for, depends on the case, obviously. But why am I showing you this? Or why am I showing you this one? This is called the collaborative data hub that is very similar to the DS hub that we DS are allowed to use. And it's distributed on three different nodes. One of them, this is the same for the DS hub, has the complete online archive and long-term archive. This is what is called long-term archive. The other one has two weeks rolling archive and the other one has three rolling archives. So through this is how we feed ourselves from this data. So yeah, so so you have an idea. So we connect to something similar to this called Diaz Hub, like this one. This is not accessible to you guys. You can you have the more the same interface for the Sci Hub, and I do can log in, and then you can have a little bit of like uh, search depending on yeah cloud coverage we're talking about before sensing period etc. And you may find um, some products etc. So that's this is our our source for main uh, Copernicus for Sentinel products. For Copernicus, pro, Copernicus core services, we've got uh, CCS, uh, we've got CLS, that, it's, um, that performs the operations and put them on our, on our catalog. And other than that, we've got uh, the one Atlas source for uh, high resolution imagery. And then we've got, as I said, the App42 uh, tailored services that maybe you'll find it interesting. Okay, so yeah, so you know how does the DS actually work? You know, it's not uh, we collect the information that the Sentinel PDGS payload data ground segments have transferred to the data hubs to the DS hub, and then we exploit them in a way, uh, making them available and adding added value tools to it. I hope uh, I hope that's clear and that's interesting. Surprised to see your show yourself. <laughs> now, well, Luis, we know. When I was just joking, I, I could find out who was it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not playing policeman. <laughs> but I, I believe it must be one of you guys, and it's great. You know, if you're uh, already that, that capable, I, I'm sure you'll get like great results on the, on the. Um, good to know, it's you then, Luis. <laughs> you'll get, you manage to make something great out of this challenge. So, all right, we go to the application layer. Let's just let's check it out, what Solo is all about. I wanted to show you the dashboard a little bit. I wanted to, uh, for you guys, in case you haven't done it yet, to register and generate your own API key that will be used for the toll of the API, not for any other API. The rest uh, don't need authorization. And we have all of these. Uh, all the tutorials can be accessed either going to Solo 2 Solo documentation, or either directly going to this uh, this link, and we're going to download a couple of products. Okay, so we just have a look at the the interface. Yeah, of course, uh, we are RGPD compliant. Thanks, Ludo. So, well, this is our main platform that I'm sure you are familiar with with the interface already on Soblu Soblu.eu. Voila, we've got quite a nice. Interface in the beginning, the global data offers, satellites, core services, mobile data, thematic products. Uh, well, we have here the, the global data offer from, based on different sentinels that, that I showed you before. We had the Muscat products, well, linked to the Muscat catalog, as we'll ask uh, very, very early today. The spot and the play ads. Um, Copernicus core services, a bit more information on what each one provides. SOCAP. Uh, mobile data, this is fairly new. This is something we just had in it's called uh, Fluvision, and it's something from that Orange has developed for uh, data delivery. So, well, I think you cannot see the video. You cannot hear the sound anyway. But basically something that helps correlate certain 
uh, indicators with the with the movement of uh, yeah of devices of people RGPD <laughs> but it's something you know like we, we just try to add as many added value services so in the end the user can put them all together and make something incredibly useful out of it like what I was telling you about the the invasive species on the on the ocean hackathon that really blew my mind voila go much into the, that detail different what we said manage operating system the elastic cloud servers with a different type of flavors you know computing cloud services here on the marketplace you find a bit more information on um, the high very high resolution all other back services now etc which I think could be quite interesting for you. We've got some news. Uh, help get started documentation, the GitLab and the FAQ. Uh, the moment you are logged in and connected, you can send us a ticket if you want to through support. Voilà. So you can get in touch with us through that. And we appreciate it because it's easier for us to track it and you know, it doesn't really depend on, it, it's a slightly easier. So if we would appreciate it. Of course, you can contact us by email as well. But if you're using the platform, it's, uh, it's good to, to make use of the ticketing system as well. The dashboard that, uh, that we just saw before, news and events, etc. On a public GitLab, gitlab.com, public. And we've got the different um, tutorials and documentation on, on how to use uh, Sublu. And even you've got an authentication tutorial. So that will be the one that that you should follow if you haven't done that yet. I mean, it's pretty straightforward, but you know, we we have quite a lot of procedures to for for everything. Basically, you just register, complete your profile, look at your settings, and then what's key is that you go to API keys. On the left, the moment you go to your profile, you click on my profile, and you go to API keys, and you can generate a new key. And you need to copy it the moment you create it. Uh, so if you want to download via API, which again, depends on the use you want to make of the platform, if you're like, targeting a very, very specific product, you can do it through the website, you can download a couple of products, and maybe that's enough to do the research that you want to, to do, I don't know, maybe you're, you're into like massive uh, download and you need 100 products and throughout five years, and then, well, we're talking about something different. I don't think you want to download uh, 500 products by hand. Um, so no more further do there. I deleted the cookies, so I could go through, uh, it's not the first time that I'm on the platform, but, but the moment you first connect, you get like this tutorial, which, if I'm not mistaken, it's also uh, data catalog and documentation. I think it might be here. Yeah. So it's also here, I mean, step by step. But we can go through it together if you want to. So the moment you, in order to get here, you just click to uh, global access to all data. Okay. And you just get here. And if you want to go through this again, as I said, you just delete your cookies. And then the moment you connect, you'll, you'll see the tutorial again. You can search what you want, combine words. For instance, you can search data in Spain and France. You can write the Spain's France if you want to. Yeah. You can draw a box if you want to filter data from like a certain region. This board allows you to see the analytics and filter data on several criteria. Okay. What criteria is that, please? WMTS, so meaning you want to visualize the data. Local storage, because you want to download the data from our own S3 buckets and not from, uh, not be redirected to the ESA hubs. Um, if, you, if you're looking for offline data, that's interesting. That means that you already, you already know that you want things from more than nine months old on our platform. So meaning we've got the metadata, we can tell you what the product is, but you cannot download it from us, then you could just go here. And then you could go on the, the different the different collections, even the different type of product, the level of production, level one or level two. I mean, all the details on these products, I'm not going to give them to you because I don't know them by heart, but you find them on the ESA website or on the, on the Sentinel per se website on the Copernicus program. I don't know the I don't know why I had the difference among them and I don't know which one's more useful for you. We also have the cloud coverage, the timeline filter on the bottom. Time shortcuts if you want to access to the list of products by clicking here. Plop. Cops out. 
you can visualize it in different ways. I can do some sort of uh, the geo search, the distance between the center of the map. Hi, Ankur. You're raising your hand. Yeah, would you like to say something on the chat? Well, um, keep going. The, if you want to view the WT, WNTS products, just click on here. You have to select one of them. You can have different information layers, roads or country or names. No top of Voyager, right? Basically, that matter, positron streets. Actually, you can draw a polygon if you want to uh, change the display of the data on the map on the 100 features. You can also change the base of the application in case you want it to be this right or other. Uh, yeah. So if uh, we had Sentinel tool because they're like easier to, to visualize. And we want to say WNTS. Uh, we want to say uh, we have more local storage, for instance. Uh, we say, hey, where's the Carlos Ter Carlo Tercero? I don't know. Is it on the north? Well, let's have a look over there. Let's see what we can find. Um, reduce the cloud coverage. So we can see something a bit clearer. We have 305,000 products. Let's need to give it a second. My home bandwidth may not be the best. You can also choose a timeline. If we minimize the search, look for something recent. My bandwidth is freezing a little, a little bit. Sorry, guys. Yeah, well. <laughs> At least it's found that 4,000 products is still 350,000 the moment we uh, we narrowed the search. But uh, I think I've got a, an issue here with my bandwidth, so I'm just going to proceed. Well, you can imagine that we can. I have a few products that we'll see anyway, so don't worry about this one. But basically, you can you can either filter with this one or this or with this one, and then you'll be able to select uh, an area of your interest. If you go here, then you have a bit more of details on the products. Sentinel 2, you have the size of the products, you have the name that then you have to like uh, translate if you want to download it. Or you can try and visualize the product. There we go, that's working now. The WMTS layer allows you to remember that you have to filter that it's a WMTS product, and like that, you are able to like see on the mountains of uh, Aragon close to Hakka, the northeast of Spain. Yeah. Where are the products? So the products are here, depends on the filter. So, you know, we've got like 4,000 or so, and depends on all the time that we are, uh, and the time that we are selecting, and uh, depends on the search that you want to do. Let's see if we want to do, anyway, it's 20 past six, so I better move on. Um, okay, so if you want to download a product in principle, the only thing I mean, you can hear, you can just download it by clicking on here and download should start automatically. So this is a, a fairly easy way to access the catalog, the different uh, products. I chose Sentinel-2 and I chose Spain, but if we reset the filters, yeah, the problem of visualization, as you can see, it's my internet or the, the, the bandwidth really is not. Uh, I have uh, quite a few things open to show you to show you later. So it's not necessarily the platform is not. Uh, oh, well, oh, well, you've seen how to make it till there, how to get to like the, the download. And basically, then you just click on the little blue cloud. And the moment you come here on the information, and you should be able to download the product, as you can see here. So the product's been downloaded. I'm going to stop it because I don't need uh, another giga. Uh, well, basically, we've managed to filter with uh, different, uh, now it's coming up. Maybe there was a glitch there in the network. And now it's coming up. You can find the, the ones that, are, that you're after, depending on what you want to do with them, and you could upload them by hand like that. Okay. And again, if you wanted to, uh, to get the API keys as showed in the, on the wiki, you go the authentication tutorial just on the profile you go to the left and you get your api key 
okay on my profile okay. but at least let, let me let me continue let me uh, show it on my screen and then we can see what's going on thank you okay so uh, just like now to go on to the Soblu desktop so we've gone this we're getting to the end of our our tabs this is mine so as uh, we said there were like this uh, spreadsheet can can you still see my can you see the spreadsheet now uh, yeah, sorry no i change uh, i change tabs on the other screen uh, yeah so basically well the, the only mean that i that i wanted uh, to give to this is like as you can see that you can have a few people connected so at least you could organize yourselves onto uh, the machines but yeah there's these two the so blue desktop one and the so blue desktop two uh, with this the uh, username uh, and password so you can just connect and i presume that you are in one of them um i had set up a few things to make sure that they were ready so i wanted to go through the so well here's the sublo desktop first of all as you can see which is nothing uh, more than an embedded sdk system on the virtual machine with a few tools that uh, we believe are useful and the, and the copernicus program thinks they're useful to to the data processing so we've got snap uh, QGs, Jupyter Notebook, um, and a few more of them. So, uh, yeah, so we're back at the the tutorials and the documentation. I presume this is lava that's, uh, that you, that this is where, where you start and I went to Jupyter Notebook. Uh, as you can see, the only uh, API that requires authentication, meaning that requires the API, is the download one. Then if you use uh, the rest, the quick look, the WMTS, etc., you just need the product information really there are a few examples on jupyter notebook that, that can be found here this is the python code that you can that you can directly execute so what we were going to do it's we'll get uh, we'll do like search and download of some products both in um, through the jupyter notebook and just directly through the through the api okay so uh, there are many ways on which you can uh, find products that we have seen there's uh, for instance uh, the possibility of just finding it directly on the on the uh, web interface then uh, what you may want to do unless you want to download the product directly you may need to translate the id the name of the product onto the uid that as the api documentation uh, requests so this i for simplicity or also to show something else you can use it with a restlet client and uh, it's fairly easy it's uh, in case you want to use this one this is just a chrome extension called restlet and uh, you only need to type in get method then you use the api and by the end of it you write the product you click on send and you obtain the id and this is the ID of the product that you want to use in order to go with the with the APIs. I may copy all of this onto the machines uh, onto the onto the chat directly if you want. This is uh, something. If we go back to the desktop, this terminal is just uh, the Sublu desktop been initialized. Oh, there we go. So this is something that you can also directly do via simple curl you secure and you get the, the information that you want and you may want to say well actually you added a few more parameters there so well yeah, i did I added the core percentage and i also added a polygon to identify the region where i wanted to find products if i just do it like that like this this first main curve you get a series of different products with their ids one two several of them and then you can use other tools obviously like jq to just like choose uh, one of the ids and then this id you can use it uh, with the quick look api type it on the navigator so luio api quick services quick look blah 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 and it shows you the quick look of the of the product to see if that's the one you were interested in or not in case you're wondering how to draw a, a polygon that you probably know it there are plenty of uh, applications that allow you to do it 
voila, and there's uh, the information you need to pass as a parameter to the request. For instance, if you then wanted to download one of these products, and that's probably what we were mentioning before, you just need to write the header, authorization, API key, then your API key, and then just uh, the product. So you can see you can just do that directly by curl. Uh, you can do it. There's a Python code on the Jupyter notebook uh, to, to do it, and we'll see it in a second. It's one of the examples with the SDK. But there are things that are, I mean, at the end of the day, you choose how you work with the API. And either you use uh, clients like the, like the one I show, uh, you can see the number of requests that I have already said here, because I need, I want to test that uh, the DSAV or the SciHub or the UMETSAT, which we didn't mention, but UMETSAT also provides some of the Sentinel-3 products, that they work or not, we want to go to one atlas, uh, we want to change the certificates, more on the infrastructure side, etc. So, you know, it's up to you at the end of the day, whatever is more comfortable, depending on what, what you want to use. But at least uh, just wanted to show that you can just go to your terminal, bam, curl, uh, copy paste, and and you can download one of the products. You can you can use an extension from from Google Chrome, or you can also go to your to the Jupyter notebook. Uh, if we come here in the beginning, uh, we've got uh, that's the main page of the Jupyter notebook, and uh, we can maybe go to we've got the desktop, we've got the the tutorials for EODAC, that's the embedded SDK. The first one that, I don't know if it's here, that's a result. Mm. Yeah, it was this one, wasn't it? Yeah. So basically, uh, on the documentation on the wiki, you find uh, this, uh, this, this code that is already written to help you find out the list of uh, of products in the, in the area of Spain. You have all of the, the dependencies, all the functions that come on the top from it. So you need to make sure that you have all of them on your code before you execute it, that they may depend on some of the, the previous functions that are also listed here. But the, ol the only thing I've done with this is, uh, I'll place it here. You know, I came onto a Jupyter notebook and I went on desktop. Yeah, I went on desktop, new text file, and they just copied everything. And they just made sure it was right. And obviously, I had to debug it a couple of times because um, I was a bit silly on the way I copy pasted. I had to add these two uh, functions as well, I had to import them. But now, at the end of the day, when you just connect onto Python and you just uh, you just run it, so you open, you can do new Python three like this one, and you just you only need to like import example. That's how I named it example.pi. You get twenty seven. Uh, is that it? Two hundred ninety seven thousand products. With the different IDs on the on the region on the area of Spain overlapping with Spain, you may say, well, why is there an exception on the rendering? It's not in all of them, but it is because, as we've seen, all the products are not images. Some products are Copernicus core service, like this one, like a mar um, maritime product that interface with the region of Spain. And that uh, that could be a quick look. This could be a different one of Copernicus core services, so that's why maybe you get some of those uh, warnings. But um, at the end of the day, the only thing uh, the only thing I've added from this uh, this already made uh, ready made code, it's uh, well nothing in this case because I don't need a oh yeah just the API key here yeah, in the beginning on the header same as uh, we saw on the terminal of this one. Yep. So authorization API key, and then the product and where you want to, where you want to save it. So this was uh, one of the, the examples that I wanted to go through. Mm, we wanted to see also. Yeah. Well, we saw the the example here of the, the image with a quick look already for the for the download. Then uh, for the EODAG that is the embedded SDK. 
uh, we got uh, three, well, no, five different pre-coded examples, basic spare areas. One of them is to calculate this one, calculate the vegetation index that we saw up 42 have a nice five minute video where they explain a little bit more about it more than I know about it. But the only thing that, that you have to do here is to modify your API key like like I've, I've entered mine here. You know, and then uh, then you just need to well you can modify if you want to the the area where we're looking. In this case we want to see uh, the center of Toulouse as you can imagine. <laughs> and also the dates this could be the same result we could obtain you know if we click we click here you know, we it's exactly the same result although it's not very readable but we get the different products that are going to be part of the, the vegetation index calculation and then uh, the different uh, the different subsequential functions allow the plot to show the areas with vegetation or not. This is the the river. This is the Canal du Midi, and these are the parts with uh, different vegetation. Uh, the way it works is it quantifies the vegetation by measuring the difference between the infrared and the red light, which is uh, absorbed. So that's why also the the coloring. And in order to execute this one, you know, the only thing I did was uh, was to type in that and then you can go to send run all cell run all or delegate to run if you're on the on the beginning uh, just needs to to process it for a little while this one is the search uh, search and download example and similarly the things that you can modify are your api key as well as data and as well as the region this case we're looking for sentinel 2 l1c products in the south of france firstly the maps the products are searched for we've taken a certain number of products Let's see and then we choose to call from the list of products the first one something you could you could modify anything here i mean you could, you could, you could want to like so the second one the third one you know you can that's what it's made for and uh, then you could just go and download it and similarly to the previous one uh, you just go to sell run all searching products on provider so blue sending the request and in different search request found 619 products uh, so it creates um, a list with the results on a json geo json it's a tricky one there we go and it's downloading it's not bad speed in the end it's better when it's an internal product okay uh, there's a different one uh, we could also maybe give it a go. I haven't tried this one. <clears throat> Search for parent areas. Might need a little bit of debugging. We'll see. Copy. Please change me. You're so kind. Did I do it right? Hope so. Let's see. And the end of May, a wildfire began in the north of New Mexico. The fire has burned 36,000 acres. Well, that's something that something good and worth uh, uh, surveilling, isn't it? Okay. Well, I'm just going to run it and ho hope for the best. <laughs> Workspace visualization. So the different segments are being executed one after the other. Service unavailable. I think that I think the product, maybe the data, was not. Uh, yeah. Obviously, we don't have products stored from them, as you can see. So it's something we have to modify right, with different dates. But when you see something like this, just double check because the Jupyter notebook has not been uh, 
upgraded for uh, for a while, well not for a while but i mean the, the examples the demo the tutorials you know we don't we don't change the dates manually all the time and actually i think it's a good exercise to, to debug a little bit but these products are offline so they cannot be found on on so blue we need to go and retrieve them from from misa uh, i see some people are leaving so I, I, let me just uh, we have to modify this and, and run it again but I, I really wanted to show you the qgs that i had it open here so this is the main image the, the main interface that you get with qgs i had downloaded a product here the one i had downloaded with the curve if you remember that I, I named it like that um, and just extracted it there. It's quite a big one. It's like 800 mega. And, and then from QGIS, what you want to do, if we, you want to visualize a product, you want to go to the WMTS. That is where we are at the moment. And you, go to, you click on the WMTS, okay? And then you want to create a layer like this one test layer if i go and edit it so you just need to add it's simple this one doesn't need the api key doesn't need um authentication so you can name it however you want and then as we have seen as well as you can see the excuse me in the, uh, the documentation for the, the api same as the quick look etc services we use the quick look and the id of the product to uh, see the, to obtain the, the first image of the product, we use the, w, the WMTS to generate this additional layer that we allow for that allows for further visualization of the product. So that's the only thing you need to do. You need to add the, the ID, and you just add it. You, once it's done, just click on, on Add, add it to the map. And here, anti anti the product because I just did it, is where you where you get your your image with a slightly more or less definition, and you can zoom in and you can have a slightly better visualization of what's going on here on the port. And maybe this is something that could be used to uh, determine the the number of vessels that are coming in terms of maritime surveillance or depends on the, the region that you're on, which you're, you're trying to achieve. Uh, also in terms of agriculture, of the, of the areas that have a different vegetation index, as we have seen, uh, density of the population, uh, etc. That concludes for me what I wanted to show you. I wanted to show the Jupyter Notebook and the tutorials, as well as the search and download. If we hold on if we go back to the to the presentation on the desktop play uh, there's some the documentation for the apis we did the EO, the eodag with the wsdk we did use the restlet client as an easier faster interface or, or, or curl or or python for the search quick lock and download apis we done those three we use uh, these two different uh, tools and uh, in principle, because I see some people leaving, uh, this concludes what I wanted to do for the demo with, with the tools that we've got. Uh, you've got here the R contacts, and as well, I encourage you to use the Blue platform and the help desk ticketing system to submit queries that you may have regarding utilization, etc. Thank you and Godspeed with the challenge. I'm glad we didn't have major connection issues either, but uh, we've got a bit of time now. So I'll go back to the moderators. I don't know if you want to do a Q&A, a, a wrap-up, or if you want to look into more uh, detailed uh, issues. Thank oh, you. thanks, Eugenio. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad you found it interesting. Cheers. Well, I just copied on the chat okay. some of the commands that I have been using. Uh, careful with that thumbs up. Sorry about that. I just copied it automatically. But about the documentation, so maybe you want to like uh, directly copy paste some of the, the commands that I have been using uh, with the API and with some of the user IDs. Uh, well, here you have to insert your own API key. Um, just please, please feel free to do so. And if you want to, uh, well, yeah, yeah, just reach out. Um, I really hope this was interesting. Thanks for the thanks for the feedback. And uh, that does what, what we do really. What we do with Soblu with this platform is we want to uh, to foster the utilization of digital platforms, and uh, we do our best for to be useful. So thanks very much for the opportunity of being here and presenting this. Yeah.